Number 8. Teenagers Lost in Catacombs While some sections of the catacombs in Paris are open to the public and even offer guided tours, the majority of the tunnels are closed off. Nevertheless, people still illegally sneak in to explore them or hold secret parties. One Saturday night in October of 2014, two teenage boys aged 16 and 17 entered the catacombs. After exploring a portion of the intricate tunnels, they couldn't find their way back and got lost in the vast underground network, which covers roughly 150 miles. They would spend three days in the catacombs, which hold the remains of over six million people. Rescuers found them by using sniffer dogs and thankfully, aside from cold exposure, the teenagers were unharmed. Urban exploration, also known as urbex or UE, is the practice of exploring man-made structures that are abandoned, hidden or forbidden. Historical documentation and photography feature prominently in the activity. The rise in interest in urban exploration could be attributed to increased media coverage of the places in question, which may include urban ruins, roofs, underground tunnels, storm drains, sewers and many others. Urban explorers often adhere to a code that prohibits vandalism, theft or property damage. Many tend to follow the philosophy of take nothing but pictures leave nothing but footprints. A more dangerous offshoot of urban exploring is called rooftopping and it involves thrill seekers climbing tall structures and making videos or taking photos, sometimes in death-defying poses. The risks of urban exploration and the activities that derive from it are plentiful, both from the perspective of physical health as well as from a legal standpoint. Number 7. Rebecca Bunting In June of 2018, Urban explorer Rebecca Buntin was swept away by flash floods from a Philadelphia storm drain. The 30-year-old woman, described as a queen in the world of urban exploration, had been taking photos alongside her boyfriend. During the flood, he was able to pull himself out of the Pennypack Creek's raging waters and call the authorities after Buntin disappeared. Her lifeless body was found the following day, trapped under furniture abandoned in the creek. It's believed that the woman had been knocked out as she was being swept away and had consequently drowned. Number 6. Maxime Sarug On January the 12th of 2017, French rooftopper and urban climber Maxime Sarug lost his life while climbing a bridge in Lyon. The 18-year-old's Instagram featured a number of daring pictures of himself on urban structures high above the city's streets. These included stadiums, factories, cranes and towers. Sarug once argued in an interview that it wasn't the quest for adrenaline but rather his love of photography that led him to take risks. His stated goal was to capture elements of the urban landscape from a different perspective. Unfortunately, his latest endeavor would have a tragic outcome. While climbing the Mulatier railway bridge, the teenager lost his grip and fell to his death. The abandoned structures that urban explorers target may include amusement parks, factories, fallout shelters, asylums, sanatoriums or hospitals. In Japan, the practice is known as Haikyo and it's particularly popular due to the country's abundance of abandoned infrastructure as a result of earthquakes, World War II and rapid industrialization. One variation of urbex called infiltration involves exploring elevator rooms, roofs, abandoned floors and other areas of buildings that are in active use. Cataphile is a term used in reference to urban explorers of catacombs, such as those in Rome, Odessa and Paris. Abandoned transit tunnels like the branches of the London Underground or New York's Rochester subway are also popular locations. Draining is another offshoot of the activity, with practitioners targeting storm drains and sanitary sewers, while roof and tunnel hacking is a variation that involves accessing utility tunnels. Number 5. Wu Yongning On October the 8th of 2017, while attempting a dangerous stunt, a Chinese rooftopper fell to his death 62 stories. 26-year-old Wu Yongning, who described himself as the country's first rooftopper, would often livestream his death-defying performances. The sites that he used reportedly allowed his viewers to offer virtual gifts that could be converted into money. It's been argued that these incentives, coupled with the fame and followers he'd gained, had led Wu to pursue 
increasingly more dangerous stunts. Some of the videos he'd post showed him dangling from skyscrapers by one hand or his fingertips in what would become his last performance. Wu climbed to the top of Chan Sha's Huayuan International Center. He performed pull-ups by hanging from the edge of the building. However, when he tried to climb back, the tips of his shoes kept slipping on the side of the skyscraper. The harrowing video of Wu losing his grip and then falling out of shot subsequently started circulating on the Chinese social media site Weibo. Number 4. Andre Retrovsky In September of 2015, Russian daredevil Andre Retrovsky fell to his death while posing for a photo atop a nine-story building in the city of Vologda. Retrovsky was part of the rooftoping craze which had overtaken the country's youth in recent years. With the selfies he'd taken life-threatening situations, the 17-year-old had gained some attention on social media. His latest stunt involved hanging from the side of a building with a rope secured around his waist while posing for a photo that would have made it look as if he'd fallen off. Unfortunately, the rope snapped and the teen plummeted to the ground. He survived the initial impact as the drop had been cushioned by some bushes but later succumbed to his injuries. Rooftopping, which is primarily performed by younger people, is not universally condoned among urban explorers because of its dangers. The attention given to these thrill-seekers, particularly on social media, will drive them to try extremely risky stunts like one-arm hangs at dizzying heights. The margin for error is virtually non-existent as falling is synonymous with death. Exploring storm drains is also dangerous due to flooding and several drowning incidents have been reported. Those exploring extensive networks like catacombs or other underground tunnels risk becoming lost. Abandoned buildings may feature unstable structures, stray voltage, broken glass or harmful substances. Floors and roofs are susceptible to structural collapse which may result in severe injury or even death. There's also the risk of encountering guard dogs or aggressive squatters. The long-term health effects of urban exploration include pulmonary illnesses from exposure to asbestos and contaminants from dry bird feces. Exploring sewers can be extremely dangerous due to buildups of toxic gas like methane, carbon dioxide or hydrogen sulfide. In addition to these inherent dangers, there are various legal consequences stemming from trespassing as well as breaking and entering laws that often apply to the targeted spaces. Number 3. Jeff Chapman On August the 23rd of 2005, Jeff Chapman, a pioneer of urban exploring, passed away due to cancer. The Toronto-based urban explorer, better known by the pseudonym Ninjalicious, had founded a zine called Infiltration. First released in 1996, it covered various urban exploration topics like venturing into abandoned military shelters, navigating storm drains, and evading hotel security. Chapman was credited for coining the term credibility prop, which is an object like a device or a piece of equipment solely meant to reduce suspicion if one is found in a restricted area. According to his girlfriend, Chapman was diagnosed with autoimmune diseases after becoming an avid explorer. This led to extended stays in hospitals, which only enhanced his fascination with venturing into such institutions. He would ultimately be diagnosed with cholangiocarcinoma, a type of cancer that forms in the bile ducts. Doctors attributed the illness to carcinogens that Chapman had come into contact with during his years of exploring. Three years after a successful liver transplant, he succumbed to the disease at the age of 31. His book, Access All Areas, a user's guide to the art of urban exploration was released shortly before his death. Number 2. Eric Jansen In October of 2017, urban explorer Eric Jansen suffered a fatal fall from the London House Hotel in Chicago. The 48-year-old journalist was visiting the city for a tour that promised behind-the-scenes access to over 200 buildings. Jansen was reportedly fascinated by urban decay and had a passion for photography, which often saw him exploring rooftops or abandoned buildings. He wasn't staying at the London house and had stepped away to take some pictures after visiting the hotel's top floor lounge. It was reported that he trespassed in order to get to a ledge on the 20th floor. It was there that Jansen took a tragic misstep that sent him plummeting to a sixth floor roof below. He'd sustained multiple injuries 
and was pronounced dead at the scene. Today's topic was requested by Kiki Gaming, JQYDXN, Batmang, Julian Gargalano, and Alta Anastasia. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comment section below. Precaution is usually the best course of action when it comes to urban exploring, providing that the activity is done under legal circumstances. This often means acquiring the right information about the layout of the place and making sure to venture into areas of it that are structurally sound. The equipment required depends on the site itself but most often includes, aside from a camera, comfortable clothes, durable boots and gloves, a medical kit, a flashlight, as well as food and water. To mitigate the dangers of respiratory illnesses, many urban explorers choose to wear respirators or dust masks. The cardinal rule of storm drain explorers is to avoid the sites in case of rain. Those that choose to pursue rooftoping, even though it's often illegal, should at the very least refrain from performing stunts that further endanger their lives. Number 1. Ethan Bonner In August of 2020, Ethan Bonner died from injuries sustained after falling through the roof of an industrial building in Devon, England. The 22-year-old urban explorer was on an old Dairy Crest building in the town of Totnes when the structure beneath him collapsed under his weight. He was trapped in the derelict building with critical injuries for more than 24 hours. The young man was eventually discovered by a dog belonging to a fire service search team. Bonner was rushed to a hospital where he was later pronounced dead due to severe skull fractures. In the incident's aftermath, his mother revealed that he'd filmed himself atop the building prior to falling through the roof. Thanks for watching. Would you rather spend a week in a house rumored to be haunted or a night in the sewer? Let us know in the comments section below.